Okay, everybody. Welcome to Stephanie's Hemp Studio Spa. Stephanie Fryson Hemp Studio Spa is my official name. Um, today is September 1st, and I'm going to just show you a little something that we do um, in addition to doing the Reiki healing. Um, while you're waiting to have your actual Reiki healing done, we're going to go over a few different things like some her herbs that can be used to help you with certain situations. But also, everyone will have the opportunity to color and to actually use that time to transform your energy and actually meditate on peace and healing. Um, now, um, it's not very hard to do. It's just I want you to just see what happens. Um, so I'm going to start coloring and I can tell you um, what I'm doing and what I'm thinking while I'm coloring. Um, so most of the time in life, we have a lot of things that are um, causing us stress. And most of the time we think about those things and focus on them more than we should. And we kind of need to get out of our head. So coloring, and there's lots of other activities that we do, but coloring is one of those activities that actually helps you because you have to stop and you got to make some choices that don't involve you thinking about whatever problem, your relationship, your job, or whatever else. Um, so we're going to take a moment and just do that. And then I'll attach a picture in the end of the finished product. It normally takes me a long time to finish one of these projects. Um, hours, as a matter of fact. Um, to finish them the way I like for them to be finished. Um, but it's very peaceful, very tranquil. Um, it's really good with, with some tea, which we have tea available at our sessions. And it is just very good to get out of your head. So I'm going to turn the camera so that you can see a little bit about my setup here. Um, so I have my little markers. I have my gel coloring pens. I have my, let's open this up, assortment of color pencils. I have my assortment of regular pens, different color pens, because there's a different effect that a pen has versus a pencil. And then I have lots of coloring books, but I've already chosen this one because this one has a message that says, enjoy this moment. And this particular coloring book on the back, it has an additional message. And now I'm going to make interesting mistakes, make amazing mistakes, make glorious and fantastic mistakes by Neil Gaiman. And then there's a section at the bottom for you to journal your thoughts. Whenever you color, you need a bleeding page because sometimes there's things that bleed through. And if you're coloring in an actual book, then you'll mess up the next page that you have. So it's good to always take it out of the actual book and then put it down on something. The tabletop that I have, this desk, this desk that I have, see it's black here. So if I get colors bleeding into it, it really doesn't show up. And I got this from Walmart. So it was not that expensive, um, just a good surface to color on. All right, so how do I start coloring? People worry about the wrong things. They worry about getting things perfect. I go with the feeling, the energy that I'm trying to express. And if I want a feeling of peace and calmness, I may start with the blue. Now, because blue is a calming color, whereas red is fiery and has a little bit more passion to it, so I just pick a spot. I always start from the center and work out because if you start from the exterior, you might have color on the edge of your hand and it will get over your artwork. And I can show you guys some other things that I've done earlier on so you can understand what I'm talking about. So I'm home in my RV so you can see like my entire RV here in the background. So I pick a color. And I just go and start with where, what do I want this blue to represent? Um, so blue represents flowers. So let's just make some little flowers. So I took and I made my first little mark. Okay, so I'll adjust this down some more.
And as you color, I would like for you to think just about some happy thoughts. You know, like, for instance, as I'm coloring this, I'm thinking about when I was a little girl in Michigan. Playing outside. It was so nice and peaceful, and I really, really loved it. Um, I enjoyed the scenery. I have this memory where we were at a little farm-looking area. And on that farm looking area, there was a tractor. And I remember sitting there outside, um, just thinking how nice it was. Now I'm a kid at this point, so in my kid's mind, this was just the best thing that I could enjoy. Sitting outside, looking at this tractor, being on this tractor, not driving this tractor. And I was in a cornfield. So that's very peaceful and relaxing for me. Okay. Now you can color how you want. I like to mix it up. I like to take, um, and if I'm going to color in my blues, I like to go start with a different shade of blue, a series of blue. Now these are gel pens. So when I use the gel pen, it's going to have a different effect. So I started with that light blue pen and now I'm going to add some other blue shades and like this flower here, this flower has pretty petals. And I like to vary things because I know that life is not always normal and it's not always easy and it's not always what you expect. So when I color my flowers, I don't like do all the petals the same color. I change it up. So I pick something that looks like this blue might go with it and then I just put it there. So for instance, this flower here looks like it might want some blue. And then I'm going to take my little blue pen and I'm going to add blue to some other areas. Now the thing that you have to watch out for is that these gel pens, they tend to bleed through. So if you're not careful and you don't have something behind it, you, you, that's when you would see a lot of problem with bleeding. Now if you color and you have like little white spots because like your pen doesn't go all the way through, you can take another color such as a blue coloring pencil and you can go through and actually you'll shade in those spots. I sometimes do this, sometimes I don't because sometimes I like the imperfections because it reminds me of life and myself. and. I have all of these things that are perfect and then I have all these things that would be considered imperfections and I would not be who I am without the combination. So I will do that. Um, so since I have this out, I'm going to go ahead and touch on some other parts that I think the blue, since I started some blue flowers, I'm going to go, I'm going to make another blue flower.
So, as I was coloring just then, I had thoughts in my head, and I, I like to be conscious of the thoughts that I have. Um, and as the thoughts that I had were of actual um, peace and beauty, I, I was thinking about how I really want to make this pretty. Um, and that just reminds me that what is pretty to me may not exactly be pretty to you. And that's the beautiful thing about coloring is that you are making it pretty for you because this is an expression of who you are. It is not an expression of who I am, nor is it an expression of who anyone else is. And the wonderful thing about it is every piece of art is beautiful. It's just a piece of your energy that you have shared with the world. And I like to mix it up. I already know that there's a really, really pretty pink that I want to save for this part here. Maybe I want to save it. Maybe I don't want to save it. But in my mind, because I like the way that pink looks, it's like when I get to it, I want to use it on that edge there. But I don't want it to be forgotten in a sense. Um, so I would go ahead and add some shades of pink because... Sometimes I get in a orange and a brown theme. Sometimes I get running into a blue and green um, kind of stain with the color wheel. And making sure the colors flow together. And other times I just like to mix it up. The entire time that I'm doing this, I am sending thoughts of positive energy to lower my blood pressure um, because blood pressure rates can be really, really, really high and I want to make sure that I lower it. I also send positive energy through the universe for peace um, and joy and happiness and when I'm coloring, I often think back on happy times in my childhood and I tend to focus that energy into my art. And then that just really allows me to enjoy the experience. And as adults, we sometimes get caught up in adulting and all the things that adulting involves. But just for this moment, you can be free. And just for this moment, you can think about existing and sharing. Because right now, there's nothing else that you have to do. So people have asked me, do they need to bring their own coloring tools to me when we have different sessions? No, you don't have to bring your own tools. I have books, I have pencils, I have pens. Um, yes, you get to take whatever you create home with you. What you have to do is bring yourself and a willingness to actually take time out for yourself. And we'll talk about different things like herbs that you could use um, 
like turmeric and ginger because those are kind of becoming popular today where we can have some conversations about things like um, diets. Um, one of the forms that I belong to, there was a question about the whole 30 diet um, and we can talk about that and people talk about what their experiences have been. Um, I have different people who are on some modified keto or some modified Atkins and they just want to go over that stuff and I say the, the thing is we can discuss that only to the point of where it doesn't create stress because if it creates stress it defeats the purpose of what we're trying to accomplish this is and a lesson in stress reduction. You know what I really would like is a color wheel, something where I could put this on and as I need to, I can flip the page because I like to flip the page around to get to certain parts of the page, especially since I'm starting from the center now mind you, there will be times when I will start from the exterior. If something just strikes me that, hey, I want to add this there, I will do it. Because that's just the reality of coloring. I could do whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it, however I want to do it, right? And then I see this orange sitting here. And all of a sudden, I just feel the need to add some Winslow orange here. Orange doesn't normally go next to the blue family, but I just want to do it. So if I want to do it, then it happens. And then I'm going to pick up on that orange here and the S. And normally, because I love S's, because Stephanie is starts with the letter S, S's are normally always pink or purple, because purple is my absolute favorite color, and pink is close, and then the blues are close, and the greens are close. So my S normally is one of those colors. But today, I'm going to make this one an orange. And the orange representing a little bit of a stronger, stabilizing energy. And that's because right now, I would like some stabilization in my life. I just spent the last 10 days in a hotel as my RV was being repaired. And I colored a lot during that time because my stress was higher because I was not in my home. And I love being in my home. So that brings me to another point. People ask me, where do we do the Reiki sessions? Well, we do those. I, I do have a place that I rent out um, for these big sessions, like the one we're doing on September 13th. But I also do them here. I actually have a Reiki table um, that goes right here in the center. So this is a very personal experience, one-on-one. -on -one. No one else is here. I do them at your location as well. Um, see how that... To me, that's like so pretty, just like it is. Like that orange just popping with that stabilizing energy coming forward. And I can take that stabilizing energy with me. And since I have the orange out, I'm going to go ahead and add it in a couple other places. Because I like to do that, just randomly add an orange somewhere. And I don't know how this is going to work with whatever other color that I have. And that's the beauty of it. I don't really have to know how it's going to work. I just do it. Thank you. 
Now when you use coloring pencils, pay attention to the actual color that you're choosing because like I have all of my pencils set up by the color family. So all of my browns are together and then red is close to brown. If you look here, all of my greens are together and then all of my purples are together and my blues are together because not every color that you you think is purple, you think is red, not every color is true to form. Um, so most of these coloring books come with a testing page so that you can actually see if the color is what you want it to be before using it. Um, sometimes I have used testing pages. Most of the time, I just go with the color um, because I just think that it can hardly do any harm to put it there if it's a, in the red family. If it's not the color that I really want it to be, I can always make it darker. Most of the coloring pencils are lighter in nature anyway, so it's easy for me to just go over it if I want it to be something darker than what already exists. Now something that I do like to do is when I take like a marker that has a shade of blue, I like the color next to it and a color pencil or a pen or gel with a shade of blue because I think it gives like a really nice contrast. Um, sometimes I think it's like a, a added effect. when you color with pens one of the things that I notice is like the pen it kind of goes in um, I want to say kind of grainy um, which is pretty nice in one sense because isn't life like that sometimes we have grains of, in our life meaning we have holes in our life we have things that we think are going a certain way and then there's just little pieces of it that just don't go exactly how we need for it to go. So you have to go back over those areas. those little bitty lines of grain and inch in there and that's okay you can leave that you can color it in if you like and I like that blue like that so I'm gonna go add it here to the flower This is all of my dark elements here. And I don't like for everything to be too dark, so I like to add 
light elements to contrast. Another thing I like to do is to break tradition because normally flowers you have green stems and it's coloring, it's art. I feel like why do I have to have green there? Why can't I add some extra color to it? So I don't necessarily go with the tradition of how something will look um, because it's art. It's just okay to let it look a little bit different. Now most of the time when you color, the colors will kind of stay there if you use a color pencil. You have to worry about the, the actual color running off when you use, you know, the gel pens or the actual um, markers. So that's where I try to be extra careful. Um, other than that, it's okay. So the markers that I use, this one is the big marking fine point, but it actually is fatter than the markers up top. So you have to know that when you're going into certain areas. So I take these ones on the bottom and I use them in kind of a broad base area. Because if I try to use that in one of these tiny little areas, it would just go everywhere. Uh, but I can take and use it in like these little circles like this. See that's blue, but it's a contrasting blue.
see again this pink with the pen that's one that I can see little marks in between I could go back and color that in if I like or I can just leave it as it is And by the way, um, some of these books, they come with like a picture, like it would have a picture of this enjoy this moment and it would be colored in and that would give you an idea of how you actually want to color it in um, for people who feel like they aren't as creative with coming up with a color. Um, I kind of, I don't really follow those so much. Um, what I just like to do is go with what I feel in the moment and, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect again so if I do I just make it up as I go um, there's some things when I look at a picture it has color that comes to me and and I just put that color in and if a color doesn't nothing comes to me I just start with one of my favorite colors and go from there and normally something will tell come to me as to what goes at each point So if you aren't so good at coloring, you feel like you aren't creative, um, you can get one that has those things already colored and then you can follow that color pattern. And if you follow that color pattern, um, you can vary it up by, if it has a dark green, you use a light green to test your bounds of creativity. And then you, you'll kind of get your own groove after a while. So what happens if you're not so comfortable coloring? Because I actually have a client who told me that they weren't comfortable coloring because they didn't want people to feel like they were immature. And, um, you know, I can understand that. And now if you look in the world and pay attention to television and things of that nature, you'll see that um, stress has become really, really overwhelming in the United States. And so most therapists are finding ways to help improve stress. And if you suffer from an autoimmune disorder or you have a really, really hectic work life and really, really hectic family life you have to find an outlet um, you can go get a massage and that's a great way to kind of express yourself um, but studies are, are finding out that these creative outlets actually help people especially those with high blood pressure um, to lower their blood pressure and those with diabetes because the increased stress unfortunately has a negative impact on the diabetic so, and another thing what coloring does is it helps you with eating because if you're really engrossed in coloring, you're not going to be eating the dong-dongs and the ding-dongs and anything like that because you kind of can't eat and color at the same time. You could if you really wanted to, but you might mess up your work, okay? So if you're going to color at home, I suggest that you find a quiet place to color in. And now we're going to add some red because this red is staring at me. It kind of wants to come out and play. So I'm going to do some red stuff over here. But I suggest you find a place. And most people don't have a place to color. That's why they're going to come with me because in my area... We can color and relax and have fun and you don't have kids screaming at you. And by the way, when you come work with me, it is a 
cell phone um, free zone so you have to turn off your cell phones um, it is just one hour of your life without the cell phone so you is the same as if you were having a massage or anything else you have to leave it at the door so to speak um, so you just focus on you in that moment And you know what I would like to do? I would like to be able to do this as like a mobile thing. Like I pull up in my RV and have little stations like this. And um, I would really like to do this outside. Um, of course, we can't do that right now. As I speak today, everybody's kind of dealing with the effects of a hurricane, tropical storm, Dorian. Right now, it's still a hurricane, but... I would like for us to be able to do that in the summer months, the early parts of the summer months. So maybe next year that's something we'll focus on. But for this year, we'll be indoors. Okay. Red is another powerful color, and I like to use red because it is um, my mom's favorite color. It is also one of my sister's favorite colors. And when I use red, I think about them. Um... They are some of my favorite people in the world. I have another sister whose favorite color is green. So I think about her or I think about my son. So when I color and I think about the colors themselves, I think about people that I love. And I like to think of happy thoughts of those people when I'm coloring. Um, such as my sister calling me actually texting me while I was asleep about this whole hurricane wanting to know if I was coming home meaning going to Pensacola and of course I was like um no I'm not and then of course she threatened me don't make me come down there and of course I'm laughing because I'm like well come on then maybe if you come down here I'll go home with you but if I have to get on the road and drive seven or eight hours while people are out there being crazy over a hurricane, it is not going to happen. But if somebody wants to come pick me up, feel free.
So now that we got all those dark colors in there, let's lighten it up a little bit with some yellows and some greens and add a couple of things that kind of give it a light and airy kind of sense about it. So this color here is called Lemon, let's see, Lemon Bliss. And it's a yellow, but it's a yellow that kind of is more, it's like a fluorescent greenish yellow. So it adds a little bit of lightness to the color. So a little bit of sunshine. A little bit of joy. And then we're going to add some colors with some glitter to spice it up a little bit more in the center. So that little tea is all nice and happy. And then I'm going to throw some, how about a little goldish color on the end here. And it's a gold glitter. So when we're all done, it's going to shine. Like when I take the picture, there'll be little sparkly sections. And this little gold glitter pen here. This is called Heart of Gold. It's this color. And this is by Color It. I love their little gel pens here. And you know I get most of my supplies from Amazon. Because I have tried and tried and tried to support local markets and find things at local markets and they just don't have what I'm looking for so then I end up going to Amazon to find it a little bit of gold accent just in a couple of different places So that when I finish, there will be some pops of gold in these areas. And the other light color is green. And this is a pale green here.
Now, sometimes when I'm coloring, I'll put a color down and I'm like, you know, that's kind of light. I don't like it so much. But what I notice is that at the end, it kind of all comes together. Like I'll pick that pale green. It's not my favorite because it's not as bright, but it works in the end. And if I'm going to use a pale green, I have to follow up with a dark green. Um, and I always keep a little pencil sharpener. Now this I actually got from Wally World, Walmart. Okay. So if you're traveling, you have that little pencil. And I have a larger pencil sharpener, but when you're traveling, you could take a little pencil sharpener like that with you. This is really great if you're going to be flying and you know how it is with those layovers. You don't have to worry about when they say, turn off all electronic devices. No worries. Nothing electronic here. Now, as I'm coloring this little T here, it reminds me of when my son was young and I used to have him wear these little shirts that had these lines and stuff in it like that. So, of course, this, this little T is getting a few more elements of blue and green because I used to love to see him in those blue and green shirts. He was so handsome. Those you know, little bitty cute shirts. Because boy, it was difficult finding colors for boys. It's much easier to shop for girls. So I just scan and I say, hey, is there anything else that wants that green? But there is something that wants this orange. So this orange here is called Orange Crush. And although it is orange, it's kind of close to the red family. So I feel like it kind of picks up on this little red that's there and orange a lot of times can be seen as like a masculine color so since I'm thinking of this tea and those little elements of my son this color goes together although it has that pink there but my son looks good in pink he looks good in colors he could pull off pink And for those of you who are going to ask, oh, how old is your son? He is not a little boy. He's a grown man. He's pushing 30 years old, so he'll be 30 in a few years. So, but these thoughts of him as a kid, I got to enjoy him a lot. I got to enjoy him every day. Most of his childhood. So this, when I'm coloring, I think about those thoughts.
Okay, and just like when we color with a pen, when you color with these color pencils, sometimes the there's elements where you go through and you see the little whites. And sometimes I go through and I shade those in, and other times I just leave them because I feel like they add to the character. It just depends on how I feel at that moment. Now, I'm going to take and add... Okay. Since I have this orange going on this side, I'm going to go ahead and top it off with another orange. And again, this is one of the fat ones, so it's still fine point. And this you have to really be careful about bleeding through because these tend to bleed. So I'm doing kind of a good job with not having as many bleeds today, but see I've had bleeds on other things. And bleeding just all depends on the instrument that you're using, such as this marker and the quality of the paper. Some of the ones that I have, the pages have the black backing, so there's not as much bleeding. Some color books come with this bleeding page because they know that the paper that you're coloring on is not as thick. It's made for crayons and and some papers are made for color pencils but not for markers and gel but i use all of those instruments when i'm coloring So, while you're coloring, another thing that I like to do, and now, remember how I told you in the beginning this was going to be pink? Now that might change since I did this whole orange thing. I like the orange. I'm feeling the orange vibe. So, this might, this might end up being a reddish color or a brownish color or something like that instead of pink. Um, just because I think the red will go better than the pink. Or, unless I use this pink. Haha, -ha, maybe I'll use this pink. Another thing I like to do is to have affirmations. So as I'm coloring and I'm having these thoughts of um, life and everything, um, because we're coming to an end on the part of coloring that I'm going to do with you, because I know most people don't want to spend four or five hours watching me color, but I want to leave you with an affirmation. 
So for those who don't know what an affirmation is, an affirmation is in thing, a thing that you actually say to yourself to encourage yourself. So you are affirming, which is kind of like taking an oath that something is true about yourself. And perhaps you don't quite see that that thing is true today. But as you continue in seeing these affirmations, that thing will become true. So Michael Jackson is one of the best examples of, that I can see. And before he actually made the Thriller album, he placed an affirmation up. And he put it in his mirror, in the, in the bathroom, in the, on the mirror. And he would read that to himself every day before the Thriller actually became the big phenomenon that it became. So I would like for you to actually have your own affirmation. An affirmation, I do give out the affirmations as part of my program. Um, and the affirmation should be unique to who you are and what you are trying to experience in your life. And for this session, I geared this towards people who are looking to reduce stress and lower blood pressure and actually get a handle on diabetes so the affirmation that i would like for you to say is i am strong i am peaceful i am healed i am strong i am peaceful i am healed it takes a strong person to take charge of their situation in their life. Living a peaceful existence helps to lower stress, helps you to control stroke symptoms or things that might lead to a stroke due to high blood pressure. It helps you to get your diabetes under control and make peace with your body and making peace with your body helps you to avoid eating some of the foods that you know will cause your diabetes to become worse okay. this is not um, anything new making affirmations have been done for thousands of years we've heard them in songs and music industry for years you've seen them when you go to certain churches they say lift up your Bible and they tell you to repeat after them You can do the same thing for other areas in your life. And this color, this was pink, but this one was, let's see, what is, Fandango Pink. Fandango Pink is the color. So now that we did that, I'm gonna go back and with this brown, this orange here, I'm going to add this brown because oranges and browns tend to work well together. Or let's see, do I need to make it? I'm going to add this brown since that side of the screen was more masculine. Anyway, and this brown actually 
um, will have that little gold, that little sparkle to it when everything is done. And there's that brown with the more masculine color for Antonio. I guess I'll add it to his little shirt here. to have a color be like on both sides of the page even if it's just in a little way okay so there we have it this is where we'll stop now and I will um, post a picture of the finished product of course you can go to my Facebook page Dr. S. Fryson. Um you can go to the website you can go to my um Email me, drsfryson at gmail.com. You can go to my YouTube page, um, type in drsfryson at gmail, and um, you can see the pictures, how they turn out. Um, you can go to my Instagram account, yoga plus health. It's yoga underscore plus underscore health. And then at those on those pages, I normally post the pictures, um, and that way you can see how it turned out. And if you have any questions, contact me. All right. Bye.